Now, if you think about it, information is expensive to produce. You have to hire people to compile the information. You have to put it in a nice format. You have to, to make it available to people. So if you understand that it's expensive to produce, that is a first element in considering if it's likely to be available on the free web via your favorite search engine like Google, or if you're more likely to find it through a library subscription, through a library resource, right? So here, here, here's a little picture that I like to call the business information life cycle, which tries to show you that as time progresses over time, there are different types of information produced in the world, okay? So immediately you have blog posts, you have tweets, you have uh, TV and radio that cover a subject in the news, it doesn't really matter. The next day you have newspaper coverage. You may also have press releases from companies that are affected. Uh, a week later you have magazines uh, that cover the issue for the general public, but also specialized magazines that are called trade journals. Okay, so those are something that you may not be aware of, but there are a lot of trade journals out there that are like magazines, but for professionals or for people in a specific field or industry, like Beverages Canada, like uh, you know different different specialized uh, magazines like that. Then a few months later, you may have researchers who are covering the subject who go into scholarly so peer reviews. Uh, so a few months later, you have people who get into peer reviewed. Sort journals who are publishing research about the issue. Uh, so it's different from all the other types of information out there. You also have companies, you know, after a few months, almost a year, every year, they produce an annual report. They may discuss these business is issues that are important. Conferences are being held about this issue, but it takes time to organize those, so it's not as immediate as all the previous ones. And then finally, you have books and encyclopedias that are published who may cover this topic. You have statistics from government sources or other market research companies that may help you understand a specific issue. So the idea is that because information is expensive to produce and because different types of information take more or less time to produce, you have to think about that in terms of where you're likely to get your hands on it, okay? Be it Google via the free web or the library in the invisible web. And so the idea is that if you have to write a paper, an industry analysis, a research paper on any topic, think about that. You may not be able to find a recent book or any book on a very, very contemporary issue, something that happened like last week or two weeks ago people, because people didn't have time to write about it. But you may find a book on a, a, an older topic that's similar to the current one that you may wanna use for your paper. Okay, so this is just to give you a little bit of an understanding of how much variety it exists out there in the information world in the business information world. And because business is, is, is within the social sciences, but it's a different kind of animal, it sits out there because you, you can use a lot of, of quantitative data, a lot of numbers that don't necessarily fit in the book or article paradigm. So you can look at statistics and market research and all those different things that go much beyond what you may be used to from your previous experience at, at the different schools that you've been to. So this is just to give you a little bit of an understanding of, of the complexity that's out there, but also what you should consider tapping into to get the good grades on your paper, because that's what it's all about, right? And of course, learning and understanding and building your own perception of the world, sure, but good grades. That's what we're all here for. So that's the information life cycle. And what I've derived from this information life cycle is something that uh, is, is something that I call the usual suspects who produce information. Because in the end, if you want to boil down the complexity in something that's manageable so that you can go through research steps to get the good stuff for your paper, you have to understand where this information comes from, who's behind it, right? And that's why I take all of these sources, all of these types of documents that you can use and boil it down to the usual suspects who produce them. And that's my next step in my presentation uh, on the handout. Step number three is the usual suspects who produce information.